In today's video, I'm gonna teach you five practical ways for you to break outside of your comfort zone so you can finally start living the life that you've always dreamed of. You only really have two choices in life. You can take uncomfortable action or you can die a comfortable death. The body you want, that girl you want, that job you want, the lifestyle you want, all of them lie outside of your comfort zone. Ask yourself this question. On your deathbed, do you really want to be sitting there saying to yourself, I wish I'd done more? Because I sure as hell do not. Number one, push through fear. It's very easy to rationalize yourself out of doing something. I guarantee you, if you give yourself enough time, you'll find plenty of reasons to change your mind about something. Let's paint a picture for you. Imagine you're about to go bungee jumping and you're stepping out onto that ledge and you look at the drop underneath you. What are the kind of thoughts that are gonna go through your head? Is this really safe? Does the cable actually work? Your brain's gonna come up with a million rationalizations why you shouldn't be doing that thing. And so you'll talk yourself out of it. Instead, apply the three second rule. Be impulsive and use momentum in your favor. Three seconds from idea to taking action. You see an attractive girl, you have to go talk to her. You haven't been to the gym today, but you know you should go. Grab your bag, put your shoes on, walk out the door. Do you have a sales prospect that you should be calling? Three, two, one. Pick up the phone and just start dialing. You have to get out of the habit of rationalizing yourself out of doing the things you know you should be doing. And you need to kind of trick your own brain into taking action in spite of it. You kind of ignore the fear, ignore the emotion entirely, and you start to default to this way of being. Oh well, I have to do it because I have to apply the three second rule because that's just how I live. Number two, use dynamic tension. Think of a guitar string. On one end you have your current state, and on the other end you have your desired state. To play a note, you need to tune the string to add tension. But how much tension exactly do you need to add? If you set a goal that's too hard, that's too much tension and the string will break. If it's too easy, then the string is too slack and you still can't play the note. So you have to find that sweet spot. A goal that is challenging enough for you to get you excited and make you want to take action, but it's not so far outside of your level of competence right now that it's just unattainable. And this sweet spot is actually referred to as the flow state. There's an entire book on this called Flow by an author whose name I definitely cannot pronounce. Let's put up on the screen here just for reference. Let's use an example. Let's say you want to lose 30 pounds. If you try to do absolutely everything all at once, like, okay, I'm going to hit the gym seven days a week. I'm going to eat the perfect diet. I'm going to run 5Ks of cardio every other day. I'm going to take cold showers as well. And I'm going to do sauna as well. And I'm going to do this and that and that. You're throwing too much at yourself at once. And you might have like one or two or three days of hitting absolutely all these goals simultaneously. But eventually something is going to crack. It's going to be these little chinks in your armor, these little cracks, these little like slippages where you don't hit everything perfectly, that's when you're gonna beat yourself up and you're gonna use it as an excuse to quit. So what do you do instead? You take one step outside your comfort zone at a time to a degree that you know you can manage. Even if that's as simple as I'm going to go to the gym two days a week, it's better to stick to that goal for six to 12 months than it is to stick to the goal of I'm gonna hit the gym seven days a week and eat the perfect diet and supplement perfectly and do ice cold showers and you only end up doing it for like two days in a row. One is clearly gonna yield better results than the other. So increase that tension little by little to tune that string properly. Don't break the string. So, okay, we're gonna start off with two days a week of, of hitting the gym. Okay, maybe we add one day of like long distance running in there after like two, three, four weeks. And then we start really dialing in our diet we don't go so extreme that we break that string and we add too much tension. Number three, try something, try anything. People will often complain about they can't find their passion, they can't break through, they're not excited by life, nothing motivates them. They're lost in some way, they've got no direction. Well, the answer to that is very, very simple. Do something, pick something, pick anything and give it a crack for a few weeks. But here's the key thing, give yourself permission to fail. Don't hold yourself to the highest standards from the very, very start. If you compare yourself to a professional, you're probably gonna get discouraged and quit again. It takes time, repetitions, and effort to get good at something. So with that being considered, you also need to stick to it long enough to actually see some kind of results. I have some friends who teach people online various money-making skills, and one of the most common reasons why people quit is they'll return to their, uh, their teacher and they'll say, oh yeah, I tried that for a couple of weeks and I didn't make any money. 
it takes a lot longer than a couple of weeks to learn the necessary skill sets in anything to actually yield results. So the most important thing is to just pick something and stick with it. Eventually, when you start getting good at something, you'll start to love it. It's funny how that works. Number four, get off the sidelines. Get out of the spectator seat. Have you ever seen someone yelling at the television while they're watching a game of football? My dad used to do this all the time. It's kind of mind boggling to me that somebody would get so emotionally wrapped up in a competitive event that they're not even involved in. They also tend to list all the ways that that particular athlete could have done something better, what play they should have ran, oh, why they're a bad player, just criticizing and nitpicking. Again, nitpicking from the sidelines. But the thing is, you're not even playing the game. You're watching somebody else play the damn game. So you should ask yourself this question. Do you want to be a player in life or do you want to be a spectator in life? In order to break out of your comfort zone and actually get the life you want, you need to be active, not passive. So you should seek the experiences that you desire instead of watching other people participate in them. The more you wean yourself away from that spectator mode, the more action you're going to have to take in life, because otherwise you're going to be sitting around bored doing absolutely nothing. Number five, project yourself into the future. Ask yourself this very important question. What will my life look like in one year's time, two years time, five years time, if I don't take action on this? So you can use the future problems that will manifest from a lack of action today as a reason to get past that blockage, that fear of leaving your comfort zone. As an extreme example, let's say you don't wanna to talk to women. You're afraid to walk up to a pretty girl and approach her and say hi. You're afraid to reach out to a girl on Instagram or a dating app or whatever. Well, what's the long-term ramification of that? Where are you gonna be in five years? You're gonna be lonely and sad and probably depressed. Put yourself into that actual emotional state for a second. Really just sit in it and conjure up the worst possible scenario. If that doesn't scare you into taking action, then nothing will. What if you don't start that online business you wanted to start? Well, that means you're gonna be stuck in this boring, annoying, depressing nine to five job for the next 10 years. Hell no, let's start this business yesterday. Let's get stuck into it right now. Use your fear of a terrible future to break through the walls of your comfort zone. In my opinion, the biggest comfort zone that men actually have to break through is reshaping their worldview. In particular, reshaping their worldview around female nature. So if you're ready to go deeper down the rabbit hole, then watch this video right here.